as a child, I think I was a more practicing Christian. And then when I went off to college, I kind of grew further away from my faith. And I think this is the case for a lot of people. When you separate from your home and you go off to college, um, that's the real test uh, of your faith. And so I drifted away and um, um, I was brought up uh, a lot of the time with my grandparents who are really devoted Christians. And we went to church twice a week. Um, my grandmother has worked for the church her whole life. So we had a really strong foundation in the religion. Um, we were adopted uh, by my mother's sister when I was about eight years old. Uh, my parents couldn't take care of us because they were drug addicts. Uh, then when I, I moved out when I was 17, I got mm -hmm. my first apartment and I had a job and I was going to school part time. And then I left that apartment and went off to the university to try to go to school full time. It was really hard. Um, I had to pay for everything myself. And so it was really difficult. Um, and then after school, I, I just ventured off uh, onto my career path and what I wanted to be. Um, I did a lot of partying and stuff in college. Um, I was uh, really a good girl going into school. And then I just went complete opposite direction and everything changed about me. And even when I would visit family and stuff, they would, um, they would see me and they would see a different person. Uh, when I moved out, I was a good girl and I had my head straight on what I wanted to do and was very focused. Um, and then when I, I left the school, because of course I wasn't doing any good, I wasn't making any good grades, uh, barely would even go to my classes. And I, um, I feel like God, even though I was drifting so far away, he tried, he was, you know, he never gives up on you. And he tried to, Absolutely. to keep some kind of hold on me because I, I had enough brains to get out and to stop going there and to go back and have my own apartment again and to go back to junior college and just taking it slow and, you know, finish my courses that I needed to finish. And, um, that's what I did. And I was able to, to kind of snap out of it a little bit. But then I, um, I pretty much just made that part of my lifestyle where I took on a, a career that was in the nightclub industry because I was so good at that life. So uh, I started my own business and um, I got uh, into event photography. And uh, event photography it can be charity events, uh, large dinner functions, private events at someone's home. So um, I started to make different contacts and I got into uh, the nightlife of Dallas and photographing celebrities or high society people at different parties. And then the images would get published in magazines later showing um, that Justin Timberlake was at this party or Timberland was at this club last night. So I was involved in, in that business and I was the one taking those pictures to show who was who and where were they. Uh, that just led me further into a very materialistic lifestyle. It, it became more glamorous, but it was still just about temporary things. And, um, and that was who I was looking up to was these celebrities and these models and these people who had what I thought was the greatest thing, the greatest lifestyle. And they had so many cars and they had beautiful clothes and they were beautiful people. And, um, I got to just look at them through my lens, you know, and, and, and that pun was intended. Like I would just look at them through the lens and see their lives. I would see how they were living and what they were doing and everything. So, um, I would look at them and then I would, I would, I would think to myself, well, no wonder, um, when you watch TV or something, you see all of these celebrities, they're always getting divorced, uh, or they're committing suicide or they're, you know, going to rehab. They're always looking for someone to fix them. And really it's just, you have to, to change your whole life if you want to get fixed. And, and I started to get pushed over the edge where it was too much of this lifestyle and it was pushing me further and further over the edge, you know, and it was just in the right point of my life where I was like, what else is there, you know, in this life? And I would sit around and talk to friends and we would think we were so smart. Like, what is life all about? And we would try to, to convince each other, this is what life's about. That's what life's about. But none of us really knew. Um, and there was, there was one night, uh, of course I would get home every night at, at about 4 a.m. 
and that was a normal work schedule for me. You get home from work at 4 a.m. and sleep till noon the next day and go to work at 11 p.m. I, I was hanging out with, with friends who were Muslim and stuff, and, and we would all get into these discussions too. And um, one of the people uh, that I had met um, at a photo shoot out at one of the events that I was covering was Hassan. Uh, he stuck out like a sore thumb. He didn't belong there with these people. He didn't drink alcohol, you know, so he was very uh, easy to spot for me because I knew everyone at this place and I didn't know him. And I'm like, who is this guy? And why doesn't he drink? Why doesn't he act like the other men? You know, he's not asking for my phone number. He's not trying to talk to me. And uh, I was used to men treating me like that. He and, and other people that I had met that were uh, like a real Muslim, you know, who practices Islam, uh, I would think like, well, what makes them live that way? Because they, it, it's kind of like they have something better than what I have. Like, why are you so good that you don't have to drink when the rest of us have to do these things? You know, we feel like we have to do this. So it was a, a huge curiosity. I, I would want that peace that they had. I would want to feel calm and quiet like they were shy. Uh, he seemed so different from everyone else. And so I think a uh, first thing that attracted me to Islam was not the religion. It was how a person looked who was a Muslim, like how, you know, their demeanor. So I think that this was the best, uh, and, I, and I like to convey that message to people, is that the way that you represent yourself as a Muslim, it's not about, are you wearing a kufi hat and are you saying, hey, I'm a Muslim, here's the Quran and all of these things. I would have been completely turned off if someone did that to me, like, here's the Quran, you should change your life, sister, you should come to God. I would have been like, blah, blah, blah. I've heard that story plenty of times. I, I wasn't looking for God and for Islam. I was looking for calm, inner peace and a feeling of purpose. And when I found it through Islam, everything came with it.